I started in UX design 15 years ago without any education and the biggest challenge for me at that time was to improve my visual design skills. And you might say 15 years ago the market was different and you are right, but the visual design level was even more demanding than it is right now, because we were expected to create realistic 3D looking objects using only 2D tools. So you had to know a lot about colors, shadows, composition, slide. And we might not see this style as trendy right now, but that level was required to land a decent UX design job. So in this video I will tell you how I improved my UI design skills back then and how I teach my students to do the same right in this moment. My name is Ines, my channel is about UX design, subscribe. First I need to explain to you my system of views when it comes to UI design. And the modern world has given me the perfect metaphor for that. The generative AI. And the thing is that generative AI seems to be functioning quite similar to our human brain. We are not going to go into details how exactly this black box is functioning, but what we can clearly see that in order for you to train a generative AI model, say on producing nice looking visual UI design, you first need to feed it a lot of UI design references and then a human has to manually tell the model which images better resemble the references. And I find it to be just a perfect metaphor of how we people are training ourselves to be visual designers and creatives in general. So if we take this model and I see that it works perfectly, the first step that we will need to do is to train our eyes and to ensure that we have enough references downloaded in our brains. And if I see that the person is struggling to find an appealing visual design style, I can totally say that they just did not see enough of a good UI. But you can tell me, we see UI design every day, and this is true. But the thing here, that you might be using a lot of interfaces yourself, but as a user, you never analyze them actually as a professional. And same with the clothes. We are all wearing clothes, but only a limited number of people can be fashion designers. Because to become a fashion designer, you will need to analyze clothes, you will need to find some patterns, you will need to learn the history behind the clothing to see how those trends appear and how they fade. Same with the UI design, so it has to be an intentional consumption of UI design. So first thing I tell my students is actually the thing I do myself for many many years. When I discovered this trick, it changed the way I design. So here's what I teach. I ask them to start their days with 10 minutes on on dribble.com or on any other platform featuring good UI design examples. And no joke, I'm actually doing this myself for many years. I like to pour myself coffee, to start my day with looking on beautiful things, and that has become an unconscious habit of mine. And that's important that you don't only scroll through the Dribble feed without really paying attention. It's important to analyze what you see, you need to spot the patterns, you need to save pictures that you like. And that will turn an aimless consumption to a professional training. Now, I've given this fact on every UX hackathon that I conduct and also to my students and mentees. But I often see that people are lazy and they just ignore this piece of advice and never do that. And I don't know, this is the simplest thing that you can do. And moreover, this will become and have to become your professional habit. Most professionals that I know, they start their days or at least some of the days from consuming the new information. This is how you stay on trend because the trends in UI design, they change quite fast, almost as fast as the trends with the clothing. And if we will not have this habit, you will soon find ourselves on the side of this road. That's why this is an amazing exercise that will secure your job for many years. But despite of that and me being passionate myself about this method, people still ignore that. And unfortunately, if you can't spend 10 minutes of your day studying what you are supposed to be passionate about, what you are building your career around of, I doubt that you can make it to the top of UX design. At least you will not make it there soon. It's of course your choice. I'm just giving you the tool that I know works for sure, but you have to be dedicated to it. You have to be persistent. And not having enough references in your internal library is often the key 
CEO of your struggles. Without fixing this, it's hard to move on. It's like you will not be expecting an untrained generative AI model or the model that is trained on photos of the dogs to produce you the pictures from UI design. So if you've nailed this and implemented this to your habits at least for some days of the week, then you are ready to take the next step. The next step is to collect the references for each project that you are working on. And this is something that is absolutely necessary. When I've learned this technique while working in agencies, I actually found out that my visual design skill skyrocketed. The trick here is almost the same. You are uploading the visual design styles that you like in your internal library, and you also have it in front of you while you are designing your own project. Now, many of my students, they say to me, I'm just afraid to be like someone else Else. I'm afraid that I will copy someone else's designs. And this is a very common fear. But what many people don't realize is that to prevent that, you need to collect 30, 40, 50 design references. The more, the better. And the bigger is the project and the more the unknowns there, the bigger has to be your collection. I collect the Pinterest board every time before I start designing. And I even do that sometimes for the project where we have design libraries, because the design library is just the set of the basic components. The way how I will position them on the screen, the layout I will create, the interactions, the animations, this is something that is not dictated by the library, but I can find an inspiration in my reference collection for that. And I can assure you that any successful UX UI designer do this before starting on the project. By the way, if you are a UX designer who is doing that already, post that in the comments to inspire others. And if you like this video and you want to receive more videos like that, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. It's important for me and for YouTube algorithms. And we are moving on. Now, remember the metaphor about AI. The first part is when we upload images to it. The second part is when we manually tell it which generated images are better than others. And this is a necessary next step or next level for us as well. There is a certain distance between us and the tools where we create the designs. So we need to bridge this distance. And I'm not talking solely here about learning how to operate in Figma or similar tools. I'm talking here about a more broader training for your hands. So they are able to produce in the world what you see in your brain. You might be familiar with this gap if you've ever tried to draw something that you see. You can clearly see the object, but what you draw is not even close. And we have the same obstacle in visual design. Now, how to bridge this gap, how to overcome this obstacle? In order for you to produce what you see in your head to the outer world, you will have to do repetitions. And I'm sorry here, this is a bad news for many, because really there is no other way. You just need to draw what you see multiple times to be able to decrease the loss of information. And this is almost like a muscle memory. The good thing is that once you've trained your muscles and provided that you continue training them on the daily basis at your work, the level will never go down, it will only increase. But to achieve this initial level, when it's good enough for you to land a job, you will have to do a lot of repetitions. And here lays a very specific and very crucial mistake for UX designers. Because I often see how UX designers trying to improve their UI design by creating UX case studies, which seems logical. Eventually we will have to reach four or more case studies in our UX portfolios. So why don't we create the full standalone case study, then we practice our UI design skills, then we create another study and we practice the skills there as well. But if you've ever tried to create a UX case study, you know that it takes a lot of time because there is the research, there is the usability tests, there are a lot of screens you will have to create. And if you are being really productive, it will still take you a month to produce one case study. Now that means that you practice your UI design skill only once a month and that's just too long. Yes, eventually you will get to the level that is required by the market, but it will take you a year or even more. For many people it's just too long and then they lose motivation. So I don't recommend doing this. What I recommend doing instead is to first improving your UI design to the level that is required
required by the market. And here how I teach my students to do that. Now the level number one that I suggest or the training number one is to take one of the reference images that you have in your collection and to recreate it one on one. And because you are not going to show it to anyone, you're not going to publish it under your own name, this will not be a stealing exercise. This will be an exercise where you will try to step by step recreate what you like. If you happen to be interested in the history of art, you might know that a grand artist often had a lot of supporters or mentees that were basically recreating what the master is doing, making replicas. And this is how those mentees were learning the style of the master for many, many years. And this technique works. It's just right now you don't really need many, many years, but you will need to do this at least a couple of times, especially if you are just in the beginning and if you happen to be from a family or from a culture that does not provide you a lot of good visual design references. Sometimes this is also happens that you come from a background where a lot of things around you are just beautiful. And if you happen to be born and live in Denmark or Sweden, you know how those countries value of good visual design and you are surrounded by good visual design examples from your birth. And that's why it might be easier for you to create visual design as opposed to other people who might struggle. And I personally struggled a lot because I come from a post-Soviet country and there was like really zero beautiful things around me when I was growing. So I had to train myself from the very beginning. And I found this exercise to be really useful because only after three, five repetitions, I noticed that it's almost like a magic, my muscle memory improved and I was able to create better UI design. So I definitely recommend you this exercise because I know it works and it is especially helpful if you might be struggling with the very basics of it, maybe because of your background, but it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's actually not a problem. You will catch up on the visual design style very fast, provided that you are doing what I have said in this video. So now the level number two, after you have produced the copies of the pieces of designs that you like, you can start creating additional screens for designs that you like. What I mean is that you find again a reference from your collection and say this is a screen for a home page for a design agency website. Then based on the style that you see and you can again copy it if you like, you will need to create an about me page for the same style, for the same website. The same you can do with product design. You can take a couple of screens from an application that someone else has created and you really like it and you can designed if you want to copy them or not. And then you create a separate screen that might be somewhat a background screen, a backstage screen that will kind of resemble the major style and together they will belong to the same application and the outside viewer can tell that. And this exercise is actually already resembles the actual job of a junior UX designer. Because if you join an agency or a product as a junior UX designer, you usually deal with applications or websites that someone else has already created and then you will have to create additional screens for that. And I recommend for this exercise specifically taking the screens from your Pinterest collection or from Drip. I do not recommend taking actual applications that you use every day because in most applications people sacrifice on visual design. They do compromises and the final design might not be so great if we are not talking about Apple design of course. And if you will be working based on these invisible compromises, they will trickle down to your designs as well. And in the beginning, we don't need it. In the beginning, when you train visual design skills, you will need to train it on the best references because the compromises you will always be able to take later on in your career. And I find it's more beneficial and just faster if you learn from something that has no constraints. Also, if you take a picture from Dribbble or Pinterest, you usually don't have an application at hand. To look for some guidance and inspiration, you have to figure out the whole whole ecosystem without actually having one. And this is also one of the challenges, but also benefits that will allow you to move faster. On the level number three of your journey for improving UI design, you will have to create your own applications and websites. And it's actually should be very easy at that point, especially if you are using the technique that we discussed in the beginning of the video, where you find 30, 50 references of the style you 
want. And based on those references that you have always in front of you while you're designing, you create a piece of the screen that has never existed before, based on the style that you found on references. I recommend posting those designs to Dribbble or to Behance just for the critique from other designers. I'm going to talk about that later on, but this is an additional step that you can take to improve your UI design skills at this level. Now, at this point, it actually should also feel like fun. Yes, it takes some time to prepare those designs, but usually there is a great point of satisfaction when you upload your designs, when you receive some likes and appreciations, endorsements, and also if you ask people for feedback there, they will provide you feedback and then you can grow. And as an additional nice bonus to it, you will also strengthen your reputation in UX UI design world. Now, you create those screens until you feel that what you create cannot be distinguished from the majority of dribble shots that you see every day, provided that you start your day with 10 minutes of dribble. This is what you continue to do. And then you can take a next step. You can add interactions. You can start thinking in flows and animations. Now, when you are creating a dribble shot, you also start with the references and all, but you also think about how you can create multiple screens or a small flow, an onboarding flow that could be all stitched together with nice animations. And animations will be really a cherry on top. And this will be something that will allow you to stand out later on in your career and in your portfolio. So you need to learn this at this point. This is also a skill and actually a very important one. So I recommend spending some time on that as well. Again, until you see that there is no actual difference between what you create and an average person on Dribble. And then you can take another last step up in this training and to start creating UI or visual design case studies. That means that you will start creating whole projects designed from scratch with the style that you define with your reference collection, with the interactions that you define from a beginning to an end and so on. But again, even on this point, I recommend you staying away from complex UX research, usability testing and things like that. You will add it later on because right now your goal is to increase the number of repetitions that you do in UI design training and to increase the speed with which you create those projects. The speed is actually also a very, very important factor that you pick up when you do a lot of repetitions. And this speed will allow you to be successful in your career. This will save your life and your sanity multiple times during the stressful times that will inevitably come when you are working as a UX designer. But if you will be adding a UX design component, you will start being dependent on the users that you will have to find and recruit for your research, on the time that it will take them to fill in the survey and things like that. Again, this will delay the frequency. So ideally, a visual design case study is something that you are able to produce over the weekend. So no more than 16 hours. If you are already on this level, that's actually very good. That also will help you to do take home design challenges because this is usually the time we've given for them. All those levels, they are necessary to train your UI design skills. It's hard to tell you though the time that will take you from the level one to the level five because there is one other component that will significantly accelerate this time. But if you don't have this component, that might take you quite a while until you can progress to the required level. And this, and this missing component is feedback. Remember the metaphor that I've given in the very beginning about the AI. So another human being has to tell the model what works and what is not working. Same for us, having another person who can tell you what will not work will save you time on experimentations until you find out that yourself. So if you are on the goal for improving UI design skills, you need to think upfront how and from where you will receive feedback. Because if you won't organize that, the time it will take you from getting from the level one to the required level by the market might take you quite a while. Actually, it might take you even many years. So feedback is absolutely essential. It will also create the sense of accountability and will allow you to stay on course and practice it without interruptions. 
And here, for many people, finding a mentor could be quite tricky. I actually have a video on this channel about how to find a UX mentor and how they differ from consultants and teachers. I recommend you to watch it to know what to expect from free mentors, from paid mentors, and how to find them. I'm talking there about platforms like ADPL List that allow you to be matched with mentors for free, but unfortunately the fact that you receive this service for free also brings a lot of challenges with that. People are not showing off, most people will just agree to talk to you once and then they disappear, so those types of things. And that's important to take in mind because ideally for this journey you will have to find a mentor that will give you feedback consistently. Because if you give someone feedback at least multiple times or on the regular basis, you see how this person progresses, what their development areas, what like mistakes they repeat and you can tailor your feedback directly for this person and this is what you also want because you don't want to explain what you do all the time for a new person that's really a time waste so watch this video it is highly relevant and if you want to receive mentorship from me specifically i have a ux club where we have regular design critiques and you can bring any designs that you are working on there for the critique and you will receive my personalized feedback for you the link to the club will be down below but keep in mind that we limit the number of people who can be at the club at the same time. So you can only join the club when someone else is dropped out. So if you won't find an open spot for you this time, I ask you for understanding and keep updating the page, keep checking it from time to time. We have an open spot. Now, if you will follow the advice I give on this video, you will increase the repetitions, you will have the feedback, you will increase the number of references you have in your mental library, you will notice that you your UI will become really good and it will be on the level that is required by the industry. So only now it will make sense for you to create UX case studies, meaning that you can now focus on interviews, surveys, usability tests and all those things. And a good thing is that UI design will already be predictable and easy for you to create. And you can only focus on following the double diamond and implementing the UX design principles without any distraction. And you can be sure that what we will post eventually will please recruiters and hiring managers. But you might have a question, what do I do with all those screens and flows and designs that I have created while doing the UI training? Shall I just throw them away? And there are two strategies that you can take. You can actually save them only for the design networks. You can keep posting them on Dribbble, receive likes and appreciations. You can post them on LinkedIn and also receive some appreciations there. They are also look nice usually when you post them on LinkedIn. And, and you can keep them away from your portfolio, making your portfolio being focused on UX design and product design solely. And this strategy will actually work great, especially if your goal eventually is to become a product designer and to work in a tech company. Because you don't want to appear as the person who is too focused on UI design eventually. Yes, we need this skill, but if you want to join a tech company, UI design will be an important and foundational part, but it only be secondary. The major focus for you there will be on UX design. So it's totally fine to leave out your visual design experiments from your portfolio to show that you are focused on UX. That's the strategy that I follow. I've posted a lot of pictures on Dribbble at some point in my career. Now I took down most of them that I don't like and I don't maintain Dribbble anymore. But anyway, in my portfolio, you will not see those experiments. The other strategy is that you can include those experiments in your portfolio under the visual design section. And this strategy will work especially well if you want to work in agencies or as a consultant, because that will show the breadth of your experience. And clients, they are a bit different from hiring managers from tech companies in the way how they assess UX designers' portfolios. Because clients are not sure how to assess design and they just want to find something that resembles what they have. If they have a food delivery app, they ideally want to hire a designer that has a food delivery app in their portfolio. At the same time, most of the clients will not be able to distinguish a visual design experiment 
from an actual work you had in a food delivery company. At the same time, agencies are interested in people who can bring as many tools and skills to the team as possible. So if you can show in your portfolio that you have UX design case studies, but also you have 3D experiments and experience with animations and with different styles that will show the breadth of experience an agency will want. So this is also a successful strategy to do. At the same time, this second strategy will also work for tech companies and especially for startups. Because in startups, your hiring manager might not be a designer. It might be a CEO themselves or a PM. And they also might not know how to assess UX designers' portfolios and they might buy in your visual design experiments because they could see something that resembles what they want. And that was it for today. If you know that UI design is your development area, then first start feeding your brain with nice references and do this persistently and intentionally. Also, don't forget to create a board of visual references before you start on any project and then take some time to train your hands and muscle memories to produce what you see in your brain to the outer world. And you can do that by copying what others have created first and then creating your own designs with loads of animations and nice interactions. And remember that having a substantial UI design skill is absolutely necessary to land a UX design job. It's not something optional because user experience is delivered through user interface. That's why we're called UX UI designers. I hope my advice was helpful and you now know what to do to improve your UI design skill. If you like this video and you want to receive more videos like that, hit the subscribe button down below and I see you on the next video.